Welcome back to Hourglass Season 2, Episode 5. Guys, I had to practice that intro a little bit mentally to make sure that I said it in the right order. I've not been doing super great. Uh, it's hard for me to already feel like we're on Season 2, but I've got a lot planned for this week, so I figured I'd go ahead and get started, uh, bring you guys right on in. We are at the base of what is our mail station. Um, so it's basically almost right in the center of spawn. That is one of the like corners of spawn. Um, it's it's a one chunk uh, area that we used to have marked out, kind of, I think. Um, but then basically this is one of the closest builds before I get too distracted. And we have actual like male receptacles and then there's a way up and down. I'm not sure if Glory, <laughs> I don't think that's supposed to be there, um, but I'm not sure if Glorious Wolf is finished with the interior design up above until I get confirmation. I'm just going to hang out down here, but I put my uh, mailbox top and center because I'm short. Did that just how that would work in real life anyway. Uh, so I kind of know that I already have something. You've got mail um, and a statues book. <laughs> uh, I knew I had this or what well, someone had said I had mail. I thought it was more than that. I thought I was going to get to show you guys something really fun. Um, but no, instead, I'm going to show you all my lack of sleeping skills because I have no bed in my inventory. Uh, let's come over here real quick. Uh, where I know there is a bed. Oh my goodness, so prepared. Hashtag prepared. So when I pop up, you'll see a couple of the other changes around here. We have a new building. This is actually by Vault Dweller 32, my husband, and it is going to be the light storage build. I'm pretty sure he's done with the interior except for the actual um, storage elements. Um, and I think I had volunteered myself to help him with that. And so I'm going to meet up with him. Hopefully we can get a little bit of a call in this week uh, that shows us working on it together because we haven't actually, since the start of season two, we haven't actually got to do anything together to play together because he's uh, he took off into the nether right away to help start getting everybody netherite. Math girls in the in the nether still we're still working on the big dig project so I'm gonna I'm gonna go there in just a little bit but I wanted to um, get in and get an intro because I wanted to talk about a couple of the things that we're going to be doing this week so uh, for hourglass each month is a new themed area <laughs> he keeps hiding my blocks that I'm breaking. <laughs> Sorry, so distracted. Um, but the the theme for month two, the project area is actually going to be our nether system. So if anybody remembers from season one, we had um, decided on all nether roof travel. But this season, we're going to be traveling. We're going to have an actual like main hub and uh, to start with, we're going to go in each of the cardinal directions. So north, east, south, and west. And I'm trying not to stand in the middle of the portals just because they're so loud. Um, but right now you'll notice on my coordinates HUD here, we're at Y level 100. And so there has been some discussion with the server members if we want to stay at this Y level or if we want to go down any so that we can do like slightly taller tunnels because the bedrock ceiling starts at about 120 something roughly so we we don't have super many blocks to work with vertically here um, but the theme for the nether hub and tunnels isn't gonna be this like weird hodgepodge uh, that it is now these are just kind of temporary like safety rails basically uh, but we are going for the theme called Neon Modern. So what what that means to me is um, like clean lines, but also very bright colors. And I had a little bit of a creative session on my last stream with several of the members of the server, thankfully present and giving feedback, but also uh, chat in general. And I've decided it's kind of a hard theme for Zelda to build in. Um, not gonna lie. 
it was really challenging because I wanted to use a bunch of different textured blocks um, and that doesn't really work well for modern. So I'm going to work with the server members on a design and then we'll bring you back for kind of what the final, um, what the verdict is for uh, what wins the tunnels. So, so far I'm the only one that's put an idea out there, but I did mention that it's not, it's not just going to be my idea that wins. I, I, I hope, help, help. <laughs> How many times have I asked for help in this series, in this server? Um, but I'm going to go back to the overworld. I'm going to put my mail away and I'm going to work on some miscellaneous projects until I can uh, get some more feedback about nether tunnels. Um, right now this is our sorting system <laughs> until we finish all the storage builds. So I'm going to work on sorting some of this. I'm also going to run a few of our farms. Um, so like some of the tree farms I'm going to run for the bone meal farm. I think I'm going to run the um, raid farm. Vert taught me how to run that and I may or may not have died the first time I did it. Uh, but resupply our emeralds because if we do modern, um, I'm thinking we're going to be using a lot of glass. So I want to make sure that we have continual trades available with our librarians or not librarian. Yeah, librarians with the librarians because they trade for glass. Um, so we're going to do some uh, farm grinds uh, and I'll be right back. And welcome back. I decided to go ahead and come back after running a few of the farms to show kind of the um, what 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 I reaped from my time uh, in those farms because I had a couple experiences that I wanted to visit about. Um, first of all, I did want to also show the couple changes that are going on in spawn. You can see behind me, Pants Are Nice is working on the hillside, or technically the mountainside, uh, and he is actually planting crops all the way up and like doing custom trees and everything, and it just looks really cool. Um, it's very much a grind to be able to plant, uh on steep inclines like that because you have to find a way to tuck away water sources at basically every level um, because water doesn't travel like if you have water on this level for example it doesn't hydrate cropland at that level so I just wanted to take a second I set up uh, here so, so that I could show that off because I think it really helps add like a pop of color uh, and help really d like show off just exactly how uh, steep the hillside really is and he's also worked a little bit on my um, the posts I had uh, to start giving them some more texture because um, Zelda might have forgot to go back and add extra details. So, thank you, pants. <laughs> um, but I did a AFK session at, we have a stacking raid farm on the server. Um, and what I'll do is I'll talk with Vert. Bert's the one who put it on the server, and I think I know what tutorial he used, but the player interaction area where you kill the mobs looks a little different than the tutorial. So I'm going to visit with him about like wh what he used, um, and I'll link it down in the description below if I'm able to, if it's if it's a public, um, public raid farm. I, I, I'm pretty sure it is, but I, I want to get confirmation first before I, before I do a shout out for the wrong person and the wrong design. Uh, but basically what it is, is there are like three different villages, quote unquote, in it. It's like a vertically stacked tower and it just drops raid after raid after raid. Um, so I accidentally, uh, I have Tweakaroo enabled and I've only used it once. So Tweakaroo is a mod that does all kinds of things. I don't even know what all it does. I, I don't even know. But the very first time that I wanted to use the raid farm, Bert mentioned that it would be easier if I could have an auto clicker on. So that is what this option, okay, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, tweak periodic attack. So I set this to true. And then you'll see 
my hand, my right hand, my punching hand, my attack hand um, is going, but I'm not, so like that's me clapping right now. I'm not actually touching my mouse um, or, you know, doing anything. It is a mod that just lets your player do this. And the reason why it's encouraged to use that setting at the raid, oops, at the raid farm is because it times it better than you can. Uh, it times the attack very precisely um, with the mechanics of the farm. So I may have uh, not had my settings correct uh, when I went in to uh, attempt a small little like pseudo AFK session and I actually ended up breaking part of the farm. <laughs> um, there's a, like a lot of the player area around where the uh, kill chamber is, is made of glass. And I broke like three or four pieces of glass and it uh, lets water, it let water flood out over some redstone. And it was no good. It was no good. I spent about an hour and a half fixing it. And it turns out that there was a couple problems that I didn't realize that uh, that I didn't properly diagnose. I was also the last one to use it uh, about a week or two ago. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, um, and I had died AFK. I had left myself overnight. I, I knew I was going to die. Um, so I basically just had uh, like unenchanted diamond gear and my sword on me. Oh no, <laughs> but you didn't die. Um, <laughs> sorry. I, I, I remember in the last clip I was talking to Math Girl too. I apologize. <laughs> um, but basically in that, um, in that session, oh, that's good. He didn't die. Um, in that session I had, uh, lost my gear and it ended up clogging a hopper and a dispenser that were actually really crucial to the farm. And I found all the stuff I thought I lost. So I got my sword back. Uh, this was the sword that I had gone into the AFK session pretty certain I was going to lose, um, but I got it back. And then I also got the diamond gear back, which is not super lost. And I had an axe on me for some reason that was also in the hopper. Um, but when I was finished with my session uh, this time, after I fixed the redstone and I did my session, um, I moved away from the farm before um, the cycle was complete and I got attacked by an evoker who had fallen out into the ocean. Um, I'm not sure how that happened, but there was an evoker in the ocean around where the farm was, and I actually got a Vex's head, which is not something you get normally from the uh, raid. You get all the other types of heads, um, since we have the player, like the head data pack on the server, but I'm pretty proud of this. I don't, I don't know that anybody else has one. So I think what I'm going to try to do is um, use that in one of my builds coming up. So uh, I, I wanted to show that first because I'm super excited. And then here's the results of my time at the raid farm. We got those. We got this. That. <laughs> that. And that. And then we got most of this glowstone. I think about three stacks of it um, are from something else that I'll mention in just a second but I, I packed it all up together. So almost a full shulker in my time at the farms this week. And then we also got bottle of enchanting and some instant health potions. So the bottle of enchanting and those three stacks of glowstone and all of these levels are from my time at the gold farm. And the gold farm was spent so that we could use the barter farm. And uh, I will cut now and show you what's at the barter farm. And just like that, with a bit of fast travel, we are back at the gold farm. You guys might recognize it from this hourglass in the carpet. Um, the gold farm is up behind me, but last time we were here, uh, I was standing at the edge of this big long carpeted area and there was nothing on either side of me. So that's why I wanted to bring you guys back to give just a quick little update. I, again, did not do this. This is, thank you Burke for, he combined all three of these um, areas. The gold farm up above, I was informed it is a design by Shipwreck V27. 
Um, so I will put a link to that in the description below this time. Um, to it's not it's not a YouTube tutorial, but um, he does stream on Twitch. So I'm going to put a link to his channel uh, since I I didn't know who had designed this last time. But what but what Burke has done now is kind of made this like an all-in-one purpose area so that we can take the gold straight from the gold farm after an AFK session and put it into the piglin bartering. I think there's something like 20 piglins in there, 20 or 25 piglins in there, like basically the max number you can get. Um, and this is a farm I also believe designed by Nimbo. Oh man, um, shout me, shout, shout out the right person in the in the just in the did the chat if I did that super wrong um but it's basically one of the most high power bartering setups you can get it's it's all time so that all the piggies get gold and then they drop their stuff at the same time and then it shoots across that ice and gets sorted into these slices um so what I did was after my AFK session here you craft the gold you put it in there and get that started. And then while this is running, cause you don't want to leave the area while that's running. I take the um, rotten flesh that's been accumulated during the AFK session and I trade with all of these clerics. So that's where I got the extra emeralds um, for the glowstone. Cause these guys give you glowstone. <laughs> you can see I like maxed out their trades. Uh, they don't want to, they don't want to uh, sell me stuff on the cheap anymore because I just keep, uh, max buying it but I bought glowstone and bottle of enchanting from these guys we could also potentially get lapis from them also if we if it was something we wanted to build with um it does make it a little bit more renewable same thing with redstone but really I think for now we don't need the redstone or the lapis so I've not been trading with them but uh, in the end, if if we you know have really big needs for redstone or lapis, it is renewable this way, um, and could potentially give a, give us a lot with the emeralds we've got from the raid farm. Uh, we don't have a way to zombificate these guys to lower their trades, but I mean the uh, rotten flesh is free. And I've got to wait for the gold farm to go anyway, so it doesn't take very long to just max trade with them all the way down. Uh, and the cool thing about this is, like, we have, we've had enough gold that we have enough soul seed speed books here and back at spawn. Uh, and all this, the iron, I think I might try to come up with a mini game this season. Um, I don't know that we'll have specifically a mini game month or like area, but it might be kind of fun to have a parkour that requires soul speed. So I haven't been pitching the soul speed three books at, or, or the iron boots as we get them. Cause I thought that might be kind of fun um, to do like a race course or something with the potential to die. And then uh, it would mean that those would be expendable. But also we've got um, production of several items now that are going to be very uh, thankfully renewable. Also, this is the whole reason Burke set up this farm is because he wanted spectral arrows, but I'm excited for the other items that are starting to accumulate because these are free building materials basically at this point. You just leave an account here overnight AFK and you get a currency to buy, uh, <laughs> buy building blocks <laughs> basically so um I think there is one more thing that I am prepared to do next and I'm going to it's going to be to jump in a call with vault and go look at that light storage building we still have um several of the builds in store in like the spawn chunks for storage for that decentralized storage to make sure that we get kind of taken care of this month and um I offered vault to help because I'd set up the storage um, spaces for both the mob farm or the mob, the hostile mob drops and the amethyst already. So, and I kind of have an idea for um, how to help him set up the lights. So we're going to jump into a voice call with him next. And I'm back with Vault. Hello, hello, hey, hello. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm so excited to finally get to like actually collab together. It feels like it's been forever since we actually got to play together. Um, I was mentioning that I, you pretty much had been down in the nether since like day two working for Ancient Debris. Yep, uh, yep. 
And then about the time you came out into the overworld to start working on your build, I went into the nether yeah, to work on... Yeah, we just swapped positions. Yeah, we did. <laughs> um, so I, I got to see this a little bit as it was in progress, but you want to walk us through the build? Um, yeah, this is just the light storage build. It's like a it's the lighting company, as I call it. So we go in and we got the nice giant reactor right in the middle of uh, the build, you know, <laughs> built out of shroom lights. Da -da -da. And then, uh, you know, we got the, the power supply here, goes out, feeds the rest of uh, whatever needs power here in the village. And we got two generators, you know, in case the uh, reactor there goes down. Nice. <laughs> So, so the town should not be without power, hopefully. <laughs> should not. You can come here and get all your, your power needs. We got a disgruntled employee over here. So. <laughs> he likes to voice his uh, concerns and opinions. All I the see time. that. <laughs> he doesn't like us interrupting his work either. I, I got to admit, sir, I like your desktop. Your, your desktop picture is very pretty. I, I hope that brings you much joy and the fact that you get to work next to windows. Not not every office has windows. I don't know why you're so disgruntled. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. He gets Eduardo the chicken over there too. <laughs> Let me show what that looks like. I had to ask what this what this block was because from the top I couldn't figure out what the like the dots were. And then when you told me it was a chicken head, I immediately had to come outside to see it. <laughs> so that's Eduardo. Mm -hmm. So the part that I've offered to help with is actually just the storage part, which we are underneath the mountainside or hillside technically um, on the backside of the build. And when Vault designed in creative, he had a full build, um, but because of the way the terrain works, some of this doesn't get to be seen from the outside. But I like that we're able to still see most of the build. Um, even though it's going to be like in the storage area. So really, I feel yeah. like your whole build's going to be important. Um, so I did ask if Vault wanted any special considerations in here for like how I make the redstone. And he really didn't, ha you just said you didn't mind anyway. Nope. So my plan is to use blocks for the redstone that match the build. So if they show um, after, after you're done decorating that they still kind of tie in. So I've got the um, idea for the sorter mocked out here. And then do you want to put down the shulker, the magic shulker right there? Yep. These are all of the light blocks that we're going to be storing in this area. So there are going to be 12 uh, slices of the regular impulse sorter um, for all of the really common light blocks. Um, now you'll notice there are some light blocks that aren't in here, like crying obsidian's not in here. That's going in our nether storage. Um, and then like the candles we're not going to sort we're going to let those go into the over overflow um, chest so it, it's not going to matter like what colors because if we had to sort the colors of candles that would just be like mm, 17 more slices <laughs> um, yeah we can just let them go all to the end and dump into the same chest so we're gonna do 12 slices of this across i haven't counted it yet but i'm going to assume i have plenty of space here uh it looks it looks good wait okay all right let's just check so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen yeah perfect we're fine because then candles and then if we need to feed something out back to main storage we can um and so I think what I'll be able to do is this is the space of the sorter. This is where the bubble vader is going to come up and the hoppers can go across. Uh, so really, once once it comes down through this, this is where the like hoppers are going to be. And then the chests are going to end at this line of torches right there. So you'll come in, you'll have a fair amount of space to work around. And uh, as soon as I'm done putting in the redstone line, I'll let you come in and finish the details in this section. And um, I think you mentioned you were still looking at potential uh, changes yeah. out in this area, but I think it looks great so far. Also, I didn't even go up there yet. Uh, you have another chicken head. Does this one have a name too? No, not yet. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> if you guys have suggestions for the other chicken head name. Uh, and then this is what I really like. Sorry, I know you just went down. But I really like the fact that there's this balcony here. I know originally you had designed it on the back side. Um, yeah. But I like this because we get to see a big part of the main, uh, like, land a lot feature. Of the village, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. <laughs> Uh, so I'm very excited to get to help on this project with a little bit of my new found redstone comfort. So thank you, uh, for letting me work on it. And oh, you're welcome. Cause I had no idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I very much like how your build came out. I, I really, I really do. I like it very much. So I better get to work, uh, decide what order we're putting these in, get the redstone in place. And, uh, then I'll be back in a little bit. And welcome back. Um, I thought now might be a good opportunity to show another farm that I have uh, been working at this week. Uh, one that I haven't shown on my episodes. Uh, but Misty made this farm for AFK Netherwart farming. And I just spent the night here. I started with one stack in my inventory. And I'm up to uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13... A little over 13. Um, basically all you do is you set up your account here to right click and then the observers detect when the um, nether wart is full grown. Uh, I think I got it a little bit out of sync. There are some of these that are full grown that haven't popped. Some of these here in the middle. Uh, so <laughs> it's very likely that I am responsible for yet another farm. Oh dang. If you can time it right it sets you off over there but I didn't time it right. Also, my sounds are off. So if I ever am recording without sounds, it means that I've just AFK'd a farm. Uh, because I always turn my sounds off. Oh, dang! I'm gonna die before I can get back to my gear. Um, hello? Can I get out the ladder, please? Uh, but I brought you back for not just this farm update. Um, this is part of it. Because I'm really trying to show all the stuff that I'm doing between the episodes. So y'all can see kind of what, um, like, what I just do while I'm playing. Um, I think that's kind of fun to see. I know I did a montage last season of some of the stuff I was doing. I didn't want to do a montage because I wanted to be able to explain some of the stuff. Also, yes, I'm being super picky about where this stuff goes in my inventory. <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm probably just going to come right back and set myself AFK uh, for the workday somewhere. But I also wanted to show you guys an update for what Vault and I were working on uh, in that last clip and talk a little bit more about the storage um, because we're still waiting for uh, which design goes in the nether tunnels before we start on that. So um, I'm still trying to give some time before we start that project, but ta-da! Uh, be between Vault and myself, we got the room done. Now... Um, admittedly, I did have a little bit of a setback. The, um, the feed we had originally planned over here, I had showed, uh, that it was coming up here and going that way. Well, you'll notice there's no feed and the hopper is now turned sideways. Um, that is because our actual water, like, streams from the multi-item sorter were, like, basically directly under this. Uh, and we can't feed straight up. We have to peel the water uh, lines off and so I switched it around. <laughs> very, very, very minimal change. All of the redstone still fit the same. Uh, I just had to, we've, we made that discovery after I had decided like which order the lights were going to go in. So my unfiltered chest at the end for the candles, for the miscellaneous candles, um, was at that end. <laughs> So I just had to come back in and reset up the storage uh, line so that it was in the right order. And you'll see that some of these we have like more lights than others. So I forgot to ask Vault to count a way to store shulkers. So I think we'll just keep them in the bottom chest when like, you know, when there's several that uh, get full up. But while we're in here, let me show you this. This is the reason why I had to, ouch, I should have glided there. This is the reason why I had to switch where the, um, which side the filter or like which side the feed was going 
because this is what we're <laughs> I think I'm just calling it the water trunk or the main storage trunk or something. This is going to be the underground uh, system of how we distribute all of the items from the multi item sorter out to all the builds. So let's go, let's go this way. I'll, I'll show you what's over here. This is an underside storage uh, or underside look at what the multi item sorter is doing up above. So uh, remember a couple episodes back I had showed the top part. Well, these are just like um, dispenser dropper feeders. And what they're going to do when the items go through the cobweb, it lines them straight up to fall into these water streams. And then we're going to feed these water streams out to the builds. So this main trunk line here goes between uh, several of the builds up above. So we can see here that this is how we're going to be um, separating the items. So like our blacksmith is back up on the hill behind us. So Orin had to turn these two water streams, <laughs> which was, I'm sure, really fun to figure out. Um, and then the agriculture and end items, the nether. And so this slice right here, if we follow this line all the way down, the very next uh, quote quote unquote storage build is going to be that light, uh, the light storage that we were just at. So there's going to be a water stream that comes all the way down here, turns here, and then a bubble vader that goes up into the storage there. So hopefully that explains a little bit better um, how the storage is going to be feeding. The other things that I worked with Oren on last night is setting up where the Oceana goes and then also the hostile mob storage and the botanist. So you'll remember that I did the hostile mob storage. In order to make this work, we had to cut through a cave. So no one's building in this cave yet. So I figure whatever we do to make these, um, the... How do I want to say <laughs> the item transportation? I don't think this is going to work for me. Ah, it did work. Kind of. Uh, let's get our ender pearls. This, this is why you always keep ender pearls on you. <laughs> so um, this will be a bubble vader up into the hostile mob storage. <laughs> um, so also I'm trying to sneak underground over to a bed because <laughs> I didn't realize what time it was when I started. Uh-huh. So let's just, you know, make it, make it day again. <laughs> I was, I was super prepared for this clip, wasn't I? Um, but basically all of these, um, main storage builds are going to have a feed in from the multi-item sorter, uh, that comes in and it depends on how the person that's doing the build sets up the feeds. They don't all have to be sorted like this. Um, some of them are just going to be dropped in. But so far, all of the ones that I've helped with, I've been able to find a way to do the storage for. So I think with that, I'm going to I'm gonna cut one more time, and I should be able to come back with one last update on the nether tunnels. And welcome back from that last uh, cut for this episode. I'm going to try my best to summarize a couple more things in this, episode, or in this uh, clip here. Um, but, so I'm in the nether, and I know I just pulled a fast one on y'all. We are actually not going to talk about the nether tunnels anymore, because I'm still, uh, I still want to give some of the server members an opportunity to put some ideas together, because, uh, I've, we've gotten some, like, images in the Discord for other ideas, and so I don't want to share mine yet until I can share, like, what the other ideas might look like, too because I, I don't want it to be like, this is definitely what's going to be the tunnels, and then the tunnels uh, don't look like that. So instead, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for pulling the wool over your eyes, but I think you'll be excited to find out the big nether dig, the reason that I'm actually in the nether, is finished! Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Uh, so I know, I know, I know, it doesn't look, it doesn't look that crazy different. It just looks like a big lava lake. But basically everywhere where you can kind of see these like outlines of lava that don't like the, the color doesn't change at the same time. All of that was land masses over lava. And there was like several other areas like over the um, lava lakes that were already there that had a bunch of like basalt and stuff. And it's, it just looks so funny because some of the fortress uh, generated without supports that I didn't even realize 
um, was, like, designed to have supports. <laughs> but, like, that whole, like, stretch was just... Oh, there's our dog. Uh, this whole stretch was just, like, tucked away inside of a big basalt uh, tunnel. Hi there. Bye. <laughs> uh, but this place is just crazy big. It is... The whole sphere is cleared out now. Our very last kind of uh, area that was originally the command zone... Uh, I just finished cleaning it up, and I might have to put a warning out on the Discord. Uh, we've mostly been saying that the safe spots to sign off are on the beacons. I'm not tearing any of the beacons out yet, because we still want to do the roof. But I think we have all of the spawnable spaces, and I want to give a huge shout-out, a huge, huge shout-out to Burke and Misty and Math Girl. They pretty much were the ones that grinded out huge sections with me. Um, and we, we did have other members of the server that came over and helped here and there, but Burke and Misty both had the, um, uh, mini HUD, I think is what it's called. Whichever the, the mod is that lets you see, like, the, the shape of the spawning radius. Um, so they came in and they marked out a bunch of areas for us and we just all got to dig in and they finished, they finished finally last night. I couldn't even be over here because I was working on some of the storage builds, but it got done and I'm just so excited to show this off. And I think what we're going to do as like a whole like big long server project is really make this like a feature so, um, like, this area doesn't have spawnable spaces, but it's still sticking down into this- Uh-oh. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. I think that was a ghost block at one point. Uh-oh. Let's get- let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> Before I walk away and forget it. Yeah. So we did- uh, Burke was able to go through- we did have some ghost blocks, um, and it sounds like he got most of them. Uh, that one was just hiding on the back side of the fortress. But yeah, so, like, especially this big honk of- uh, basalt is uh, still really ugly, but that is going to be a project that we work on slowly over time um, as as is needed uh, for to finish the whole big project, but the farm is like amazingly functional um, And hopefully I don't break it I'm trying to get into it. Basically all you do is you stand in here you flip the switch. Uh, this thing holds you in. I don't know if there's supposed, like, if the trapdoor matters. Uh, but basically, you stand here and you just swing. You swing, swing, swing away. Um, and I was here on my lunch and I got six skull heads. Oh, it's so loud! Oh, it's so loud! <laughs> So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave off here and just uh, AFK this farm a little bit um, and uh, leave leave off for the episode. Look at that. Look at that. Already got a wither head. Okay. All right. Well, now it's official. <laughs> That's like a super, super duper close up. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go. Y'all have, y'all have fun this week. Bye. Bye, Vault. <laughs> and disgruntled <Yeah>. employee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying him in the golden carrots. Uh, well, that's why he's grumpy. He clearly wants steak. <laughs> <laughs>